Hi everyone, this is Kathy from House of TOEFL, and I'm here today with another TOEFL lecture nature video. The questions and answer key to this listening lecture can be found in the description for this video. So I was recently in beautiful San Diego and I happened upon a rock crab that was clearly pretending to be dead. And so I decided to film it and make a video. So let's begin the lecture now. Now listen to a lecture in a biology class. If you were about to be attacked by a predator, what would you do? One defense mechanism is to stick out your tongue, drool, and play dead in the hopes that your attacker will leave you alone. Hundreds of animals play dead for one reason or another. In fact, the idiom playing possum means to pretend to be dead and comes from the most famous animal that engages in this behavior a mammal called the opossum. This idiom comes from the fact that the Virginia opossum frequently engages in this behavior, famous for pretending to be dead when it feels threatened. Feigning or pretending to be dead is also called thanatosis. How and why thanatosis occurs depends on the species. For defensive purposes, Thanatosis is done in the hopes that the predator will become disinterested in its potential prey, as most predators only catch live prey. In the hog-nosed snake, a threatened snake rolls onto its back and appears to be dead when threatened by a predator, while a foul-smelling fluid oozes from its body. Predators like cats then will lose interest in the snake which both looks and smells dead. The most significant reason for their loss of interest is that the rotten smelling animals are generally avoided as a precaution against infectious disease. So the snake is, in this case, exploiting that reaction. Thanatosis can sometimes be used to discourage a predator by simply making the prey just too difficult to eat. The pygmy grasshopper stretches out its body in three different directions when entering thanatosis, which orientates a number of its spines into prominent positions. This posture specifically protects the predation from frogs. Frogs are limited to the size of prey they can swallow whole. So in other words, the pygmy grasshopper is making its body too bulky and angular for the frog to easily consume it. But there are other purposes to thanatosis other than defense. A fish called the sleeper cichlid uses thanatosis to attract prey. When it needs food, it sinks to the bottom of a lake and lies motionless, appearing to be dead. If a small scavenger or other bottom feeding fish swims over to consume what they think is the carcass of a dead fish, the sleeper cichlid seizes the opportunity to lunge taking its prey completely by surprise. Some animals even use thanatosis for mating. Nursery spiders offer silk-wrapped insects to female nursery spiders, but they also must be cautious because female nursery spiders often kill mates that approach them. While the female is busy consuming the gifted insect, the male then goes into thanatosis. When it revives moments later, the chances the female will kill it are much lower, and it is more likely to mate successfully, not to mention avoid being killed by the female. Humans even experience thanatosis when they freeze with fear when faced with a fearsome predator like a bear or lion. This is probably an evolutionary response that made our ancestors less likely to be chased and ultimately killed by a predator. Most of the physiological mechanisms behind this behavior lie in the parasympathetic nervous system, which is better known for its role in resting and digestion. It is sometimes called the relax and digest system, and it conserves energy and can slow the heart rate and increase intestinal and gland activity, as well as relax muscles in the gastrointestinal tract. Dopamine, a chemical in the brain, also plays a role in thanatosis. Animals with lower dopamine levels engage in thanatosis more frequently and for longer periods of time. 
than animals with higher dopamine levels. As for this particular crab, it's probably just frightened because it was caught by a fisherman, and I'm sure I look like a big scary predator. But fear not my students, as this crab was returned to the ocean shortly after I shot this video, where it most certainly returned to its crab life under the sea. It has nothing to fear, at least not from me. So, the questions and the answer key can be found in the description of this video. This is Kathy from House of Toefl. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And of course, you can visit my website at www.houseoftoefl.com for more of my videos. Thank you so much for joining me, and as always, good luck on your test.